Hello and welcome to Rhino Zora's Report. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. The four games set in Cleveland against the Guardians did not start off well for the Baltimore Orioles, but the end of it, the last two games, finished very well with a few small hiccups along the way there to that split of the four game series. As you can see, I'm on MassInSports.com. Let's get to game one. Baltimore Orioles 3, Cleveland Guardians 10. This is from the Colonist Field now. Progressive Field in Cleveland. Parked very much like Hamden Yards. Same basic blueprint, really. Cows are still in the leadoff spot. One hit, work, walked once, also scored once. Slate, what is his first name? Is it Austin? It is Austin. Austin Slater, pinch hitting later in the game. Cows are lefty, Slater's a righty. Look for them to, well, <laughs> probably continue to platoon. Traded Austin Hayes away, trading from death. And so you got a pitcher in return, and then you traded for another righty that's probably as good as Hayes. Maybe Slater's a little faster, but I don't think his arm is as good. It's just weird. It's like, I mean, I guess, you know, because the Reds didn't have a relief pitcher. They were willing to trade us, I guess. Yeah. Slater with one hit in his only appearance, only at bat in this game. Does go out and look and play left field. He does look to, you know, as far as the defense aspect of this, he doesn't seem to be really an upgrade or a downgrade, really a neutral. Yes, like I said, he his arm isn't as good, but I think he might be actually be a little faster. But he's, you know, he, I've seen Austin Hayes play so many years. I haven't really seen Slater that much, so maybe it's like a, you know, new guy thing. Rutschman in his normal two-hole, at least for now anyway, Hitless, but he did drive in a run. Henderson, three hole, two hits and an RBI. Santander, a hit and RBI. A run scored. O'Hearn, DHing here. Hitless, did walk once. Mountcastle, Ofer. Mullins, Ofer. Arias, Ofer. Six combined strikeouts between those guys. Eloy Jimenez. Jimen, uh, Eloy Jimenez, pinch hitting for Arias late, strikes out. Jackson Holiday, bottom of the lineup, over, but did score a run. <sighs> yeah, not too much offense to speak of there. Five hits total. That's not good. Henderson Kowser with doubles, Santander with a home run. Uh, Trevor Rogers, Trevor Rogers, new guy, Trevor Rogers, lefty, looks to be slotted in the fifth spot of the rotation. Gets his first start in an Oriole uniform here, and it did not go well. Pitches four and a third of an inning, gives up six hits, five runs, all earned, walks three, strikes out three. He's left-handed, that's really why they traded for him. I guess the second reason would be depth, right? Because, God forbid, somebody else go from the rotation gets injured. Now who gets slotted into the fifth spot? Suarez? Tried that once already. Eh. Tough to say who would be a better starting pitcher here. Rodgers or Suarez. But again, Rodgers is a left-handed. So it kind of plays a little better in Camden Yards. We're hoping anyway. Speaking of Suarez... Comes on in relief of Rodgers. Finishes off the fifth inning and then pitches the sixth inning. So one and two thirds of innings pitched. Gives up three hits, three runs. Walks one, strikes out one. Not too much better. Jacob Webb on in relief of Suarez. Pitching the full seventh inning. Gives up two hits, two runs, no walks. Strikes out two. Not too much better either. Good God. Can somebody, can Oriole pitcher, not give up any runs in this game? Please. Birch Smith enter for, enters for the eighth inning. Finally, somebody doesn't give up any runs. Pitching the full eighth inning. No hits, no runs, no walks. I'm sorry. 
That isn't true. One walk and two strikeouts. <clears throat> and since you're on the road and lost, you don't have to pitch the ninth inning. Yay, save the bullpen. By your incompetence at hitting and pitching. At least for that day. Game two, it's be Friday's game. Four game set started on Thursday. Started Thursday, not started on Thursday. Hearing these announcers say on Thursday and on Friday and on you don't need the on. This is Thursday's game. No, this is not I'm getting agitated. Why well, am the angry rhino? Of course I'm gonna get angry at some point. Friday's game. Game two of this four game set. We're still in Cleveland and in Cleveland in progressive field. Baltimore Orioles four, Cleveland Guardians eight. Man. Whew. Cows are hitting an RBI Santan. They're hitting second here. Potential shake up to the order facing right handers. Brandon Hyde did this a few times in this series. Santander hitting second. What I've been asking for, right? Didn't go that well. Over, but he did drive in a run. Henderson moved up the three hole. Over. <laughs> the theme here. Not hitting the baseball. Over and over, but he did walk twice and score once. Rutschman dropped down to the five hole. One hit. Hmm. Mount Castle, no hits, but does get an RBI. Mullins over, does walk once and score once. Mayo, that's right, Kobe Mayo. It looked like Levon Soto was going to take Westberg's spot on the roster. Westberg out with a fractured hand. Still no timetable that I've seen. Maybe late September, maybe. But that's it's not really much of anything to go on. But for one reason or another, you know, Soto was in Cleveland Thursday and then sent packing. So Mayo could get his debut Friday. Why they didn't just do that, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, well. Doesn't... There was a misplay in, we'll call it, shallow left field towards the... Fair, fair line, foul line, whichever one you prefer. And it was long run for Kowser. Really, it was Mayo's ball all the way. And he's out there. And he even mentioned it on the broadcast. Pretty sure it was Ben McDonald bringing this up. Mayo just didn't, he didn't just go after the ball. He was going out there. But he would, he peeked at where Kowser was a few times. Well, that's not exactly how you play. You're supposed to keep your eye on the ball and go after the ball until you get called off by the outfielder. Sometimes that is easier said than done, but if he just goes after the ball, he probably catches it. Because, again, it was a long run for Kowser. So, but at the same time, that is, like, inexperienced. So, we'll see. Looked okay at the plate. This game, he does, he doesn't get his hit first major league hit yet, but he does walk twice. He strikes out twice, but he also walks twice. That's that's a good thing. Also scored once. Jackson Holiday, two hits, an RBI, a run scored, and worked a walk. So nice to see that, you know, the second iteration of Holiday looks to be a little bit more comfortable at the plate anyway. Dean Kramer gets a start in this game. Not a good start of the series for starting pitchers. Kramer only goes five innings. Gives up six hits, four runs, two walks, and strikes out two. <sighs> yeah, disappointing that Dean Kramer couldn't have a better outing. But at the same time, this is... The Cleveland Guardians, anyway, are the... They have the best record in the American League, I think. Depending on how what the Phillies have been up to... They may have the best record in Major League Baseball. So, this is not like some scrub team the Orioles are playing here. This is a really good team. And I think Ben McDonald said it, you know, very well. Sneaky good. Because, the, wait, the Cleveland Guardians have a good baseball team? Since when? Right?
Giovanni Soto, recently acquired from the Phillies, gets his first Orioles action. Does not go well. Pitches only one-third of an inning. Gives up three hits, four runs, two walks, no strikeouts. Probably why Philadelphia, with one of the best records in Major League Baseball, is willing to give up one of their bullpen pieces. Probably because he wasn't that good. But we will have to see moving forward. Supposedly, he's better than some of the options that the Orioles had out there. Of course, if Coulomb hadn't gotten injured, probably don't trade for Soto. But we'll see how that goes. Jacob Webb on in relief of Soto, finishing off the sixth inning and pitching the full seventh inning. No hits, no runs, walks one, strikes out one. Nice bounce back performance for Jacob Webb. Craig Kimbrell on in the eighth inning. Oh my God, that's it. It's going to be, he's going to give up 50 runs this time because he's so terrible. He's so old and he's washed up, even though he's tied for fifth in the major leagues with saves. He's got 23 saves, ladies and gentlemen. You don't do that by giving up four or five runs a time. Yes, he's blown saves. Guess what? Everybody else on the list above him has blown saves. Ian Holmes, the Yankee closer, has more blown saves than Craig Kimbrell. So, cool your jets, okay? I told you the end result would be the same. Yes, he's going to get there differently than Felix Batista. But you know what? Felix Batista wasn't untouchable. You all seem to think he was, but he wasn't untouchable. He gave up runs, and he had times where he would be inaccurate and walk a lot of batters. He did. How soon you forget. Craig Kimball pitching the eighth inning, a very low leverage, if any leverage at all, situation as in, you know, the Warriors are losing here. Trying to get him, you know, back on his horse. Pitching the full eighth inning does give up a hit, but no runs, does walk a batter, but he also strikes the batter out. And you know what? He has more strikeouts than Ian Holm. Okay. Maybe some of these other pitchers would, you know, do better. Like Cano, hey, learn how to handle yourself in the ninth inning. He doesn't seem to like it as much for one reason or another. He likes the eighth inning better, which is weird. But he does have saves, you know. We'll see about Sir Anthony Dominguez. I think, other than Cano, Dominguez is probably the next guy. Just because of his stuff, you know. Game three, and we are still in Cleveland. Baltimore Orioles, seven. Cleveland Guardians, four. Yay, we finally won one. Austin Slater hitting leadoff. Lefty on the mound, so lineup flipping around a little bit. Austin Slater in his... First Orioles start. Two hits and three at-bats. Mullins pitch hitting late and getting moved over to center field. Goes over in two at-bats. Mountcastle hitting second. Again, lefty. I thought I really think Mountcastle's a... Yeah, I don't know that I really want him hitting second. Does get a hit, but five at-bats. Henderson, three hits and RBI, two runs scored. Santander, two hits, two runs scored. Jesus, all these three and four guys with barely any RBIs. Who's driving them all in? Whew. Eloy Jimenez, first action as the Orioles DH start anyway. He did have a pinch hit. It's two hits in this one and does get an RBI. How about that one? And because you can, let's say, start Jimenez... As a DH, you see Rutschman did not start this game. So instead of having Rutschman DH the whole game, you can have him DH and pinch hit later in the game to say a man on or two in more of a key moment. You know, you don't really want to play Rutschman unless he can actually do something for you, you know. So let's give him some time off. And it worked. Rutschman pinch hitting for Jimenez late. One hit, two RBIs. He also walked once and scored once. Kobe Mayo, another start at third base. And another over. Rhino Hearn pitch hits late. 
for Mayo, a hit, an RBI, and a run scored. Arias comes into play defense later and does get an at-bat, but he does not get a hit. Cows have dropped really far down in the lineup because lefty on the mound. So he does get a hit, an RBI, and walks once. James McCann catching, obviously, Rutschman got the day off. James McCann uh, over. Jackson Holiday. I really do like Jackson Holiday hitting ninth because we don't have Mateo. I like a speed guy in nine hole because if he gets on and flips a lineup over, now you have your better hitters at bat here with a fast guy on the base pass. Better than, let's say, having James McCann who's kind of slow and, you know, there will be no more triples from Henderson because <laughs> McCann's probably not scoring for first. You know? Holiday here with two hits, an RBI, and a run scored. Mountcastle, Slater, O'Hearn, Henderson, and Holiday with doubles. Rutschman with a triple. Some, somehow. I'll say it's a misplay, but because... Okay, Rutschman's not slow, but he's a catcher, man. He's not legging out a triple. Come on now. A little bit of help there, but okay. It's fine. Holiday does have a fielding error. <sighs> Bound to happen. It was... What is, is the play I'm thinking of, was it that play or was it... It was that play. Somewhat of an early game, right? No, it wasn't. Why well, I think it was bright out? It did not give... You know what? I feel... I'm remembering... The ball hit to Holiday, and he really should have caught it. But it's like he brings his glove up, and it's... He kind of loses it there for a second, and it just kind of doinks off his glove. It's like, oh, okay, cool. I thought it was the sun, but... This wasn't an early enough game for the Sun. Was it? I mean, I get maybe, maybe quarter after seven. I thought it was this game, but I didn't give him an error. Weird. Okay. Of course, it's probably a whole entirely different play than I'm thinking of. But, however, errors do happen. Thankfully, it didn't really amount to anything because all the runs scored by the Guardians were earned. Zach Eflin getting the start in this game goes six and a third innings. Gives up five hits, two runs, one walk, strikes out three. And that's the greatest performance in the world, but it's pretty good. You know, kind of low on the strikeout numbers for it to be the greatest performance, but I'll take that. Seems like a good trade. And if I'm not mistaken, there is a club option for next year with Eflin. Yeah. It's like a 17 million club option. So we could get Eflin next year. Rodgers is the same way. Rodgers is actually on his initial contract, and he has two more years of control after this. So Michael Elias, I think, did fairly well anyway. Hopefully. We'll see. They'll have a few years to, you know, with some of these guys he traded for. Cino Perez finishes off the seventh inning. Doesn't give up a hit, but does give up a run and a walk. But he strikes out one. Anyway, he got out of it. Sir Anthony Dominguez on a relief of Perez pitching the eighth inning. Gives up a hit, a run. Doesn't walk anybody and strike somebody out. So giving up his first run as an Oriole. Though... At the same time, it would have been 7-3 to three in the ninth. Wouldn't have been a safe situation. I know we don't, re we don't really like Cano in the ninth just because he doesn't seem to doesn't seem to like it himself. He does seem to get jittery. Like he, 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 can't, like he can't control his emotions yet. He can't control them butterflies flowing through him because it's a ninth inning and it's a save chance. Now, a three run save... Um, three run differential for your save a little different you do have some wiggle room if it's a one run save you don't really have any wiggle room but a three run save you got some wiggle room so it's probably a good time to use Cano maybe that's how it should go moving forward 
Hopefully, anyway. We we'll, can't exactly always do that. Of course, with the addition of Soto and Dominguez, maybe you can actually start to do that. You know? Just have Cano and Kimball share the load of closer more because, honestly, I mean, Kimball is pitched just as much as some of the other closers. And he's supposed to be the least talented of them all. But yet he's pitched as much. And he's one of the older ones. The only other guy that's even close is Jansen. Jansen's a little further down on the list with saves. But, okay. Cano on for the ninth inning, getting his fifth saves. Pitches the full ninth inning. No hits, no runs, no walks, one strikeout. There you go. Come to... There we go. Come to game four. Orioles nine, Guardians five. Cows are back up to lead off. Two hits, walks once, scores three times. Santander hitting second again. One hit, walks once, scores twice. Henderson, three hits, two RBIs, walks once, scores three times. O'Hearn a hit in RBI. Mountcastle pinch hitting late. Again, O'Hearn's left-handed, Mountcastle's right-handed. Hitting an RBI. So, two hits, two RBIs from your first baseman in one game. That's, yeah, we'll take that. Even if they had a tag team in, that's fine. Rutschman, two hits, three RBIs. Jimenez, three hits. First three-hit day as an Oriole. Probably first three-hit day in a while because his average isn't that great. Does drive in a run. Mullins, Ofer. Mayo, Ofer. Strikes out three times. Arias defensive replacement late. To be expected. Ofer in his only at bat. Holiday. Again, still hitting in a nine hole. I kind of hope they keep doing it, at least for the time being. Two hits, an RBI. Walked once, scored once. Yeah, Holiday's definitely looking more comfortable out there. Jimenez, O'Hearn, Santander, and Rutschman with doubles. Henderson and Holiday with home runs. That's right, Holiday's already got his second home run. Hey, you like that. <sighs> Though, as soon as I say something good, look at this. Picked off Holiday. Yep. Santander with a stolen base. Burns with a throwing error. It's still weird that it was Burns with a throwing error. And you can see right here, five runs, four earned runs. He made the error. So weird. Corbin Burns in maybe the worst start of his Oriole career. Short or short Oriole career, you know. Maybe I think there was at least one other start that maybe you could. I don't think it was worse. The start in Houston, I think. It's going to happen at times. He's usually been really good for us. And at the same time, he only gave up four. He kind of screwed and screwed that one up. And However. Pitching five innings, gives up seven hits, five runs, four earned runs, walks one, strikes out four. Yeah, not great. And then you have three guys combining for the next two innings, pitching two-thirds of an inning apiece. So six outs between three guys. Two outs apiece. Follow me? Okay. Gregory Soto, first up, does give up two hits. Ugh. No runs, no walks, no strikeouts. I mean, at least he gets the outs right. Birch Smith coming on after Soto. You got a lefty and then you got a righty. Does get his two outs. No hits, no runs. Does walk one. Doesn't strike anybody out. Then you see an El Perez coming in again. Again, another lefty. So lefty, righty, lefty. No hits, no runs, no walks, and no strikeouts. Okay. Kind of weird to, you know, not get any strikeouts there. Comes the eighth inning. Yanni or Cano in here for the eighth inning. Pitches the full eighth inning. One does give up a hit, but no runs, no walks. Strikes out one. Sir Anthony Dominguez in for the ninth inning. Pitching the full ninth inning. No hits, no runs. Does walk a batter. Strikes out one. Kind of odd that, you know, Cano went in there for... The eighth inning. 
Hmm. Not flip-flop between Cano and Dominguez. Okay. I mean, it worked. I do think... They always got one late, didn't they? No, they got one in the eighth inning. They didn't get one in the ninth inning. Okay. Perhaps if they had not, maybe Kimber would have went in there. But it's actually not a bad deal that we didn't see Kimber. He gets another day off. More time to write himself, hopefully. And there you go. Splitting a four splitting a four game set with that is not what I wanted to do. Okay. Articles. Oh, splitting a four game set with Cleveland. Well, wow. I had to finish my thought there. Getting to an article here written by Rock Kubatko. Headline's not really the story in here. Later on in the article, Rock Kubatko mentions that Cole Urban, who was previously designated for assignment uh, after that flurry of moves from the trade deadline, cleared waivers and has accepted this assignment of AAA Norfolk. He could have refused that assignment. Or, like, he clears waivers, then the Orioles want to outright him the AAA. Irvin at that point could refuse because of his major league service time. Well, he accepted it, which is odd, but I mean, okay. I mean, look, I mean, if nobody's claiming you off waivers, then, you know, if you refuse, then what? Here you go. Another article written by Rock Kubatko saying Mayo called up and Yvonne Soto sent down. Again, did they explain why Soto was initially going to be on the team and Mayo not? No, not really. They did mention between... I didn't cite Steve Molesky's article. I didn't honestly I don't remember. It wasn't a Steve Molesky article. I think it was either this article or another article Rock Kabako Rock wrote, um, Westberg got hit on the hand, what, the Wednesday against Toronto. Well, Thursday, Holiday gets hit. So, about that time they're saying is when the phone call was made to get Mayo to Cleveland. Why exactly that would have anything to do with it, I don't, I don't really know. Because Mayo really only is going to play third base. Now, Arias could play second base and Mayo could play third, but then, you know, who's... Huh. However, I guess. I mean, I guess they would keep Soto. But call up Mayo to replace Holiday while he's on the injured list if he had to go, I guess. Maybe. Possibly. Who knows? Let's get to the schedule. Get the hell out of here. Long enough video as it is, but that's what happens when there's a four-game series. Today, Monday, off day, Orioles are headed to Toronto. Actually, I mean they're probably already there, but who uh, customs and whatnot. They should have they should have the off day in Toronto. They should be already there. Toronto Blue Jays for a three game set. All three games, thank you, Major League Baseball, are scheduled for seven oh seven. Seven oh seven instead of say let's say seven ten because usually they're gonna do the two national anthems, the Canadian anthem, national anthem and the American national anthem. But had they only needed to do one, it would probably be seven ten. And no off day. Okay, so the three game series is Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Again, all scheduled for seven oh seven, and then Friday right down to Tampa Bay. So no off day for me. So while th that will do it for this edition of Rhinos Orioles Report, stay tuned for Friday. And I will discuss the series between the Baltimore Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I am the Angry Rhino and this is Birdland.